Hello. Well, this is my introduction to expanding creativity. And on the screen right now, it's a computer shot, so I don't know how good this is going to translate. But this is an ostrich egg, and you could actually go online and, and Google my name and Adrian Martino and Home and Garden Television. And this egg is a jewelry box that was constructed uh, with a Dremel and some gemstones and gold trimming and mounted on a base. And down here on the desk, and I'm going to run around and hop in this in this picture and hopefully I'll be able to get everything in, is another application for the ostrich egg. I cut the bottom out and cut some holes in there and this is um, ceramic and it actually functions as a lantern for an oil burning lamp. Just regular lamp oil. It goes up the cord and this little clay ball holds it in spot and that's your lampshade. So as a child, um, you know, I was always looking at ordinary things and, and doing different things with them, what they weren't intended to do. And this is, you know, a good example. You know, this ostrich egg is used as a jewelry box or a lampshade. And I've also constructed candle holders out of them and had even waterproofed the insides of a couple of them and used them as little bud vases. So it could be very uh, pragmatic, which is what I do when I go to the Goodwill. You know, if I see some odds and ends, wood and uh, kitchen utensils, you know, turn it into something else that's very useful. This is more on the decorative side. And the one, it was just this little maple leaf exercise that I would go through when I was young and in a room by myself. And, you know, back in the day, we didn't have TVs and video games in our room, so... Uh, we had to be a little bit more imaginative. And I used to take my uh, tiny furniture and turn it in different ways and, and build uh, high rises for my little stuffed animals and dolls. And because we didn't even have a dollhouse. And uh, the one thing that had always caught my attention had been looking at wood paneling. I don't know if you could see this back here because this is a very old trailer. 1970s style with the the mirror and it has the gold uh, lines going through it and that was a pretty common thing uh, in the house is to have wood paneling and that type of uh, mirrored decor and I had noticed when I was younger at different times of the day in the lighting much like watching clouds uh, forms would emerge from the wood grain or the textures and folds in the blanket and normally something of lighter color uh, will do that. Now I don't know about you you know people look at clouds and you know they'll see dolphins and fish um, when I look at that kind of stuff and especially in the wood grains I always see naked people, so <laughs> it's just how my mind works, I guess. And the so I will do that with blankets and just observe. And then if I don't see anything, I go back and I crinkle them another way. But that kind of stuff shows up in in the textured ceilings for me. And so you you know outside, it's not always conducive to be laying on your back looking up at clouds. So there are other ways that you could, you know, play around with your mind. And even in trees and leaves, by now we've all had, we've received the emails where the artists draw the Native American faces in the stones and in the uh, 
leaves of the trees and then if you look at it one way it's a horse but if you look at it another way it turns into a rabbit or something else and um, so one of the other uh, ways you could do this is a homemade play-doh or just a very cheap clay and have no intention whatsoever just squish it and look at it and if you don't see anything uh, turn it another way and if you still don't see anything squish it again and pretty soon you'll it, it for whatever reason the brain starts to uh, become more appropriate with that way of thinking functioning and then more and more things start to emerge from it the other exercise that um, I don't know if there's really a terminology for it. I call it paint pushing. And uh, sometimes I start a painting out and I, I have definite intentions on what I would like to see happen on the canvas. And sometimes that works out from start to finish. And then other times I have no intentions whatsoever and I do what's called paint pushing. And that's where I take the um, paint and I make it a little bit thinner than what it normally would. And I just, it's like scribbling. There's absolutely no thought behind this. The only thing that needs to happen here is there has to be lights and darks because that's actually what creates form. So I'm not gonna give you guys any clues or you know this is purely you know your imagination and I'll show you one way and then you I'll turn it and look at another way and you could see if you can find anything emerging. So I would take the paint and just smear it around and maybe turn it the other way and I might see a couple different things and then turn it another way and then something else might happen and as the painting progresses what I would be doing is you know obviously you know this is pretty uh, pretty much shaped like an eyeball or it could be the start of a fish so then I would lighten the lights and darken the darks and that creates the three-dimensional form and uh, the depth to the piece now if you looked at it like this maybe you would see something else in it so that's just a couple little exercises that that uh, kids could do or you could do and it gets you in touch with, you know, just approaching things in a slightly different aspect. And here's where you could really uh, think that I'm a total nutter, is I have, it's a, you know, there's absolutely no uh, research or anything that I've read on it. But I've, also, I've always believed that um, being barefoot in nature has kept me... Uh, ground it, so to speak, in, uh, in tune with energy and flow. And so as a little girl, my mom was always mad at me for running around, even up and down the alleyways in the city. You know, there's broken glass and whatnot and rocks, and she was always worried about my feet getting hurt. And they never did. The uh, biggest injury that I had ever sustained to my feet had been indoors, unbelievably. So being barefoot, and I like moss, and I like going to streams that have well-worn pebbles, small pebbles at the bottom, and, and feel and let that massage my feet. And, and I, I feel like the energy, uh, you know, depending on how you look at it, coming up or down and all around, uh, travels through and you're not being insulated from it like you would if you were constantly in rubber soled shoes. So I, I, it's my belief that, that this is part of the process of becoming more aware 
and in tune with the environment and therefore you become more uh, aware of the creative impulses just being in touch. So if I could think of anything else along this lines, I'll, I'll post part two, but that's pretty much my basic uh, theory and exercises for expanding creativity. Uh, have fun with it. There's um, really inexpensive and uh, easy to make uh, Play-Doh that uh, you could, you know, with salt, flour, cream of tartar, and water, mix that up, and it's all natural, and give that to the kids to play with to start uh, getting them thinking in a three-dimensional, sculptural, creative way. And there's also some really great recipes for uh, bathtub finger paints uh, with cornstarch and, um, and some food coloring and baby wash, but of course, you know, try to get the natural baby wash, it's expensive, but um, maybe that's what I'll do is I'll research how to make, make uh, my own baby wash that doesn't hurt their eyes. Okay, I'll be back. I don't know exactly what my next video is going to be, probably the canning. So, keep plugging and be optimistic, and God bless. Talk to you later. Bye.